Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. So looking around our country, you can see that it's a very divided country. You've got straight versus gay, black versus white, left versus right, rich versus poor. I mean, it's almost as if there's some controlling group of people that are trying to create so much division in America that no one looks at this controlling group of people as the enemies. And fundamentally, no one looks at this as a battle of good versus evil. And instead, we get stuck in thinking it's a battle of political ideologies or sexual orientation. And so joining us today is Anna Kate, someone that actually was born under communism that came to America and was an atheist poker player that actually came to God and now has made it her mission to expose and fight against the satanic agenda, but also to remind people of the right principles to approach this battle with. And so this is going to be hopefully a, an inspiring interview. Um, this is my, my kick lately. It's just like, you know what? Let's find the good in the world. Let's focus on positive solutions. Let's figure out ways that we can win because ultimately God is on our side. So anyway, folks, I think you're going to really enjoy this interview with Anna Kate. Noble Gold Investments is pleased to let you know that gold is the best investment class for 2023. Real estate, crypto, stocks, and bonds, gold outperformed them all in 2022. So what are you waiting for? Noble Gold Investments has helped thousands of clients buy real physical gold. Open a gold IRA or a silver IRA with Noble Gold Investments this month and receive a free one quarter ounce American Eagle coin with every qualifying purchase. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. Anna, it's such a pleasure to finally have you on the show. I've met you many times backstage at the Reawaken events, but it's nice to have you as a guest on. So thanks for coming today. Thanks for having me, Seth. It's an honor to be here and, and I love your show. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Oh, you too. Absolutely. So for the, for the folks that don't know you, can you just give us a little bit of a background of how you went from kind of poker playing atheist survivor to someone that is now like dedicated to saving our country through righteous principles? <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. It's a miracle. I mean, I was born in the Soviet Union. My family brought me here when I was four. Um, even though I've always known that socialism and communism is evil, I was indoctrinated in schools like, like you were, we were talking about it before the show and became a professional poker player, was on survivor, had an encounter with God in 2016. But back in 2015, I took the red pill and I woke up and I realized the state of the world. I became very vocal. Um, at that time, you know, survivor aired and used my platform to endorse candidate Trump at the time, uh, lost all my friends, all my fans, everything was pretty hard to go through, but I'm so glad that happened because it really activated the boldness to preach Jesus and preach the truth in this, in this country. And, you know, against communism and socialism and everything that's the devil's pushing in this country. So it really is a spiritual battle more than anything. And it's been an honor to be an active patriot because there's a difference guys between a, a patriot and an active patriot, like such as yourself, Seth, you're an active patriot releasing information. You're on the front line. So it's not easy, but um, it's worth it. It's it's interesting that you you mentioned kind of turning to God and then fighting communism, yes, you know, because so a little bit of my you know kind of background. So when I graduated from art school in I think it was two thousand and eight, I went and and for whatever reason somehow amidst the massive liberal indoctrination of being at a liberal art school, I developed this wish to fight communism. It was like my sole mission emerged probably sophomore year of college, and I was like, I have to fight communism at that time. So I got involved with human rights efforts in, in really kind of very focused on mainland China and the Chinese Communist Party. But it's amazing because at that time, you know, you wouldn't have looked around and said, there's this battle of good versus evil or the battle of freedom versus communism here in America. It was really people that primarily had lived under communism or escaped communism that were, you know, signing the alarms into Americans saying, look, like this is a real threat. But fast forward to now and what you're seeing is that, especially within the within the you know, Christian community, you've got, you know, I'm not going to try to categorize it, but there's definitely a large segment that have come to the same conclusion of saying, like, I am all for God and I am all for fighting communism. And so it's amazing that now there's this there's this united front, right, a positive united front 
against fighting communism and Satan and to protect America and save America by going back to the values that God ordained and that the way that God wants us to live, not living in complete sin and debauchery, which is, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, but getting away from that. It's just, it's just amazing how all these different paths are kind of coming together and we all find ourselves in the same team fighting the same enemy. Yes. And it's the same common enemy. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. The Bible says the devil's tactics from thousands of years ago are the same tactics. Now it's to divide and conquer. It's to push uh, sin. It's to push debauchery. It's to push his own agenda, which is control. And that's what communism is. That's what socialism is. And like you're saying, you know, a lot of immigrants, if you've lived through socialism or communism, this is why you love America. This is why I emigrated to America. Thank God my parents brought me here. I didn't make, you know, I was four, I couldn't make a choice, but they did it for me. And I'm so glad they did. And so when we came over to America, my parents and my family saw, okay, the Democrats are pushing socialism. And that's why my whole family, exception of a few, are all Republican. You can't, not be Republican. Uh, unfortunately, the Republican side is also very co-opted with rhinos as well that just have been in office for too long. But there's some standout ones who really are fighting for the freedoms of this country. And um, only by God's grace is able to fight back in, in a way as well. Um, when I joined Project Veritas back in 2018, I infiltrated one of the biggest socialist communist organizations called DSA, Democratic Socialist of America. Um, I infiltrated their DC chapter. And it was eye opening, to say the least. And you got a few communists fired from the Department of State, obviously, the New York Times and other BuzzFeed and Daily Beast. I mean, they all attacked James and I and, and a few other journalists saying that we're honeypots. I mean, I never went on a date with anyone. In, in fact, when I was undercover, I, wear, I wore no makeup. <laughs> I was like, no deodorant. I had to fit in. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. But that's obviously their tactics to completely defame and, and um, uh, you know, attack us. It, it says a lot about the organization that you fit in by wearing no deodorant and no makeup. <laughs> yeah. And I still stuck out like a sore thumb. I'm telling you, I'm just like, ah. you know, I have to say this too. I was expecting, especially in communist organizations, especially like DSA, I'm expecting, you know, pink hair, purple hair. Not everyone has pink hair, blue hair, purple hair. That's not true. You know, obviously there are the ones that you do once in a while, but most of them remind me of my high school friends. Most of them are just totally normal kids, totally normal, you know, young adults. And I remember thinking that's what really changed my perspective, Seth, was I came in there when I worked undercover. I came in thinking I'm going to expose Democrats. I'm going to expose the communists. I hate them. I'm mad. And, and they're my enemy. That was my heart when I came into the organization and, and worked undercover. But really quickly, that perspective changed. I'm very grateful the Lord allowed me that opportunity because it really changed my heart because I came in angry and they're my enemies. And then I realized, my God, this could have been me. This could have been me. And a lot of them, like I said, you know, want to mention too, they're not radical. And most of them are not radical. Most of them are like, oh, I want to join a club. They come join a club and they have a lot of nice people there. By the way, a lot of Democrats and, and socialists, they're really nice people. You know, it, it's not the ones you see on Instagram and Twitter, the purple hair, yelling and screaming. A lot of them are very sweet people. You'll never guess they're communists. You'll, ne you'll never guess they're Stalinist, Leninist. Of course, there are the radicals and you can easily spot them. You can easily sense their energy and the demonic realm around them. But some of them you'll never know. And so really changed my heart. And I realized they're not my enemy. They are deceived, really. They, in the Bible says, Ephesians 6, we battle not against flesh and blood. We don't battle against human beings that have, you know, a body, flesh and blood. We battle against principalities, spirits, demons. Unfortunately, when they're so deceived and indoctrinated and they start getting full of anger and they have these open doors, demons jump in, jump in right, in, right into them, right? So unfortunately, it, it's really a spiritual battle. It really is a spiritual battle. Joe Biden was right on his campaign bus where it said, um, we're fighting for the soul of our nation. Oh, we are. It's a very obvious good versus evil. And you don't win by fighting evil with evil. You, you win by fighting evil with good. Folks, I've got a quick message for you. Right now, the world is very, very actively going through a process that the experts are calling de-dollarization. And look, I've been talking about this for well over a year now, but maybe you're now starting to see it in the mainstream because they're now talking about it because it's really happening. Well, what does this mean? Well, there's a few factors, but there's two main factors. One is that the BRICS nations, 
Okay, this is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and a whole coalition. They are actively getting rid of the U.S. dollar. They're stopping their trade in the U.S. dollar. And this is significant because the dollar's losing its status as the global reserve currency and as the petrodollar. This is what gives our dollar its value. But the other thing is that we have an enemy that's within our own government. Biden and his administration, they are actively working to destroy the dollar. And you can see it in their actions that they're not trying to save the dollar. They're actually trying to destroy it because they want to roll out their central bank digital currency. So you have these two forces coming in both at the same time working to destroy the dollar because what happens when that dollar gets destroyed? Well, literally your life savings, if they're sitting in the dollar, whether it's in a savings account or a bank account or the stock market or an IRA or a 401k, those savings, that money could literally be wiped out in a matter of days, weeks, even a couple of months. We're already seeing it with inflation, which is going to be much, much worse. If you're seeing the writing on the wall and you're thinking, what can I do to protect myself? Well, there's a few recommendations that I always have. One is just to make sure you've got your food. If you have land, you know, ammunition, whatever it takes, real tangible assets. But fundamentally, the thing I recommend most is precious metals, gold and silver. Look, precious metals have survived the collapse of currencies, the rise and fall of civilization. And also a big factor in this is that the BRICS nations, their new currency they're introducing to replace the dollar, a lot of experts are saying it will be backed by commodities like precious metals. And so you can see there's going to be a stabilization and I believe a dramatic increase in the value of precious metals. Not to mention, look at the, back, the past six months, we're seeing you know, 30% plus increase in the prices of silver and gold. So if you would go back and say you put a hundred grand into silver six months ago, it could be worth well over $125,000, $130,000 because the dollar is losing its value. So folks, if you want someone that you can trust for buying your precious metals or gold and silver, I would highly recommend Dr. Kirk Elliott. So Dr. Kirk Elliott is a good friend of mine, but he's a strong Christian patriot. He understands what's happening in the world. He's got two PhDs, one in theology, one in economics. So it's the perfect blend of understanding, realistically, money in the end times. So if you want to set up a free consultation with Kirk's team, head on over to goldwithseth.com. So again, that's goldwithseth.com or call 720-605-3900. Again, it's goldwithseth.com. You go to the website, you scroll down. There's a simple form that you fill out right there. You put your email, name, contact information, and that sets you up for a free wealth consultation where you can talk to either Kirk or one of his experts to really understand what your options are. Or you can just call 720-605-3900 to take action today. And I want to hone in on that point because it's interesting that that's the conclusion you got to, especially from being within that organization. And it's really what I've come to a lot on my own journey. And it's also why even with the show, like I have, I get a lot of people that come to me and they say, look, Seth, you're the only show I can send to my liberal friends or my liberal children. Because, you know, when I, okay, because if you look at communism, you look at how the communists come into a country and take it over, right? Whether it's the Bolsheviks or the Red Guards, it's all about class warfare. Right. And so, you know, in America, we didn't have these this massive poor class and the oligarchs. So they weren't able to use that class in America. So instead, the communists have used the class of race, the class of sexuality, straight versus gay, now trans versus, you know, straight, you know, even trans versus gay, which is kind of strange that that's not becoming a class divide. Right. Um, but I think one of the biggest ones in America that so many people don't even see is left versus right. And I, and I look at the entire left versus right just dichotomy as being communist class warfare. And, that, and that's why that's even, right. you know, you look at someone like, you know, say, Fox News and someone say, well, Fox News is telling a lot of truth. It's like they are. But fundamentally, what you're leaving that when you when you turn off Sean Hannity or whatever, you're leaving with an anger towards the other class. You're not leaving thinking wow, we need to unite as a nation and fight back against the communist overlords that want to put us into camps. You're spot on. You're exactly right. I mean, this is this. It's nothing new. What we're seeing in this country, you you nailed it. These are Marxist tactics. I mean, the left really, I just say communists really know this very well-known 
Italian communist called Antonio Gramsci. And a lot of people on the right are not aware of him. I highly recommend looking into his prison notebooks, or if you can even just find a you know, short book talking about what he said in them, because they're it's really long. Antonio Gramsci was a very well-known communist in the 30s. Actually, Mussolini uh, threw him in jail because he, you know, they're both competing against each other. But um, basically what Antonio Gramsci said is what Amer what's happening in America right now. He said, in order to break down a nation, you have to subvert it in, in every facet for it to fall. So for example, when he talked about Italy, in order for Italy to fall, what's really holding Italy together? Well, Rome, right? Catholic Church. So you infiltrate the Catholic Church and it'll start to fall. Uh, with America, it's what? The Constitution, our forefathers, and Christianity. So you see that on every level being fought. You know, our forefathers are racist. The Constitution is outdated. Christianity is old way to live. It's so oppressive and, and, and terrible and evil, right? Calling good evil and calling evil good. That's what we're seeing in this country. So it's nothing new. And you're right about, again, the socialist tactics because they're dividing people and having, you know, women against men. We're having old versus young. We're having, you know, the, the LGBT versus the straight people and subdivisions as well. And so it's all emotion driven. And that's what Gramsci talked about. He said, you have to destroy a nation by uh, attacking at every single level and using emotions. Why? Because humans are sentinel beings. Humans are very emotional. So when you trigger them in emotions and that triggers anger, sometimes it also triggers fear, they're now wanting to do something. So for example, Lenin, uh, and Gramsci talked about Lenin. He said, Lenin is, is old tactic, right? Lenin, what did Lenin do in the 20s, 1920s? He first had a violent revolution and then he re-educated the masses. And Tony Gramsci said, no, 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 no. What you do is you first re-educate the masses. By the way, masses is a socialist term, but you educate or you re-educate the masses and then they will demand a, a revolution themselves. So how are they re-educating us? Well, TV, shows, right, movies, music, school, obviously our education system is a big obvious one. They're re-educating the masses and then themselves are getting fired up with emotion and then they're de demanding a revolution themselves. Um, instead of a violent revolution, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's, it's being fought without guns and knives. It's being really fought by, um, by their activism and passing bills, passing laws in different states. So it's a socialist tactics. When people say, oh, well, where's this identity politics coming from? This is nothing new. This is straight communism. And unfortunately, we've been infiltrated since the 40s when we had Soviets, even Ru Russian Soviets coming into this country and infiltrating our government, our schools. And you know, we had, after Nuremberg, right? They infiltrated our country as well. So we've been having this problem for many, many, many decades. This is nothing new. This is all socialist communist tactics. And unfortunately, people People are waking up to it. I mean, you people like Sean Hannity. I love Sean, but on the other hand, like I have a friend, Jimmy from Brooklyn. He's a, a very well-known active anti-communist who has, who goes on all the shows, you know, and, and on the radio shows and talks about this for decades. He talked about the, the communists infiltrating uh, to, to have Islamic terrorism. He was talking about it back in the eighties. He was on Sean Hannity's show. He was on all their shows and they, they, thought, they, they thought he was crazy. He talked about their infiltrating the Islamic networks. You're going to see Islamic terrorism. They thought he was crazy. He was right. 2001, right? 9-11. So unfortunately, you have people like Sean Hannity now saying, oh, yeah, well, it's socialism. And that's a, we hello. You're either you either knew that and suppressed it or you just have no clue what you're talking about and you shouldn't have a show. Exactly. Exactly. And so I want to touch on something you said in really talking about how, you know, you can't fight evil with evil. You have to fight evil with good. And I think that that's really, that, that's the crux of the matter because, so how, how I look at emotions as an example, right, is that, you know, and how I try to live my life is that emotions, I believe what they do is they can take us away from our center. They can take us away from like being in control, right? Having that centered mind where you're very rational, right? So it's emotions and those feelings that lead somebody to, uh, you know, cheat on their wife or lead somebody to steal something or lead somebody to, uh, you know, flip somebody off on the road. And, and they might look back on it and say, gosh, like, why did I do that? Well, it's because your emotions got the best of you. But I think that at a deeper level, though, what the emotions do is, as you mentioned, they open a door. And I think that these emotions actually open a door to let our body be controlled by demons, where we can actually have these 
evil entities. I, I also believe this. You know, we're in a spiritual battle. That you know, you look at somebody. You know, you say that like an Antifa person. It's like foaming at the mouth with blue hair, screaming and eyes eyes bulging, and it feels demonic. Well, maybe it actually is some sort of entity that's like on the back of that person, right, controlling that person because the devil's waging war on us, right. And so, but also on the flip side, right, it's easy to make sense of that. But I also look at it on the flip side and think, well. What does it mean then when I have compassion for somebody? What does it mean when I'm not moved by something and, and I, I just want to save that person's soul, right? And that's my mission going into it. Well, maybe I've got these amazing angels right beside me that are also helping, right? And that's what gives, has given me a lot of strength in how I view this battle is that it's a spiritual battle. It's not just that like, it's not humans against demons. It's humans with God and, and angels and and all that divinity behind us fighting this battle. Spot on, you know, and unfortunately I see that on the right as well. I might not see the bulging eyes, but I've seen the anger and the hatred. And I, I looked at both sides and I, I go, okay, there's a difference here, right? You have the left. A lot of times are preaching truth, uh, preaching love without truth. And a lot of times I see on the right side, we're preaching truth without love. Unfortunately, the country is so divided. You have people full of demons, like you're saying. And like we, we spoke about, it says it in the Bible, you can't combat that with evil, right? If one side is angry and hates one side and the other side is angry and hate the other side, guess what the Lord showed me? The Lord showed it's two sides of the same coin. If you are passionately angry and hate, hating them, you're, all, you're passionately wrong, just like they are. So you are the same, you're the same coin, different side of the same coin. So in God's eyes, you're also wrong. You're also wrong if you hate them and you want to kill them and you're unforgiving them and you're bitter. You're just as bitter as they are in God's eyes. When you stand right, when the right and the left, right, stands in front of God at the end of your life, you will not be able to use the excuse. Well, Lord, they did that. And they said that, and they're passing these ungodly abortion bills and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they've debauched you in the streets. God's going to say, but what about you? What about your heart, daughter? What about your heart, son? You need to know better, right? So again, emotions, we're talking about emotions, anger, whether it be joy or, you know, anger, especially anger, it, it's flesh. The Bible says, Romans 8, 8, it is impossible to please God when you are in the flesh. So when you're passionately wrong and passionately angry, you're in the flesh. That's emotions, right? That's called the flesh. It's impossible to please the Lord. How, then how? It's impossible for us to do it. It's, it's so easy for me to be angry and bitter and frustrated at everything that's happening. That's why I barely even go on Twitter anymore. Like I, I can't, I can't. But at the same time now with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is peaceable. The Holy Spirit is love. The Holy Spirit is compassionate. It doesn't mean that we compromise with the devil. It doesn't mean, you know, when I look at someone and, I, and I, they're full of sin, it doesn't mean I hate them. No, in fact, I have compassion for them. And it's impossible for me to do it just Anna. You know, Anna's dead. The Anna I, I used to be years ago, my whole life is dead. She's six feet under. Now it's the Holy Spirit living within me. You have to accept the Holy Spirit. First of all, you have to repent of your sins. Say, Lord, forgive my sins. I want to know you, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Jesus. And when you fill with the Holy, when you fill the Holy Spirit, you baptize in the Holy Ghost, there's nothing like it. Now I can look at that side with such a love and compassion for them that it used to be me. I used to be one of them. I used to be liberal. I used to be an atheist. I thought Christians were crazy. You tell me six years ago that I would have been a Christian talking about Jesus on the internet or Jesus on the street or Jesus on the stage. I would tell you, you're out of your mind. That's never happening. But I had an encounter with God. I know he's real. He showed me heaven and hell. He is real. And so when you stand in front of him at the end of your life, you won't be able to use the excuse of, well, the left did this, left did that. Uh -uh, the God's going to say, what about you? Because you can't control what they're doing. You maybe you can change some laws. Great. But you can't control the debauchery. So you, you getting angry at it doesn't do anything. It makes it worse because when you yell, and I've seen this, right? My friends uh, went to, actually, my flight was canceled, crazy enough. We were going to fly out to Boston. My, a lot of my pastor friends flew out to Boston for the largest satanic gathering in Boston. There were two different Christians that came there, two different groups, a group of Christians and unfortunately, you know, Catholics, religious Christians, religious Catholics who were standing out there yelling at them. You Satanist, Jesus hates you and you're all going to hell. Now, if you're a Satanist walking around in a satanic gathering, are you going to, do you want to be Christian when someone is yelling at you and saying you're going to go to hell? Because look, the truth of the matter is, of course they are, right? If they don't repent, but are you going to 
take them into the kingdom? Are you going to save their soul by yelling at them? First of all, Jesus loves them. So that's unbiblical. Number two, yes, they're in sin. But the Bible says, uh, in, in, in Ro- I think it's in Romans 2, 4, yeah, uh, 1 Peter 2, 4, it says that you, God wins us back to his kingdom through love. It's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It's not anger, right? So we, I had the, the other group, which my friends came in, undercover evangelists, undercover pastors, wore nor, you know, regular clothes, just started talking to the Satanist and, you know, how are you? What's going on? And some of them were doing interviews, pretending, you know, to do interviews and talk, show them the love of Jesus. So listen, it is sin, right? But God loves you. He wants, he wants to forgive you, but you have to come to the point where you're convicted. So for example, I'll, I'll bring up this other example. My, my pastor, she had a lesbian couple going to her church for many years, two lesbians, right? Married and living that lifestyle. Um, they came up to her one day after about a year being in church and they said, oh, we're confused because you love us. You treat us with such love and respect, but in the pulpit, you preach that our lifestyle is a sin. So which one is it? Do you love us? Do you hate us? And you know, this pastor, my pastor has always treated them with love and respect, but she never compromised. You can do good without compromising. So she said, well, you know, the Bible says that this is a sin, but God loves you. And, you, and, and, and I love you. I see you as a soul and I see you as part of the family. So you're more than welcome here. We're never going to kick you out. But of course, it's a sin. That's what the Bible says. Adultery is a sin. Lying is a sin. So there's no one sin worse than the other. They're living in sin as, you know, in homosexuality. But are you cheating on your wife? Are you cheating on your husband? Because that's also a sin, right? Are you, are you stealing money from your church? Are you stealing money from your family? That's a sin. Have you lied? Have you spoken one lie? Because God is a perfect standard. And I'm not here to say, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm like a chief sinner. You know, that's what Paul said. I'm a chief sinner of all the, all, all the apostles. I'm the, I'm the worst sinner. We, it's impossible to please God. Everyone has sinned. The Bible says everyone has fallen short. It's only accepting Jesus and the sacrifice, the blood that he shed that will cleanse us. So what happened with this lesbian couple? They were so convicted sitting there for a year, feeling the love of God, but also understanding they're in sin. They both, they got a divorce. Both of them married a man. And both of them have children. So look at that. The pastor could have told her, you're a lesbian, get out, of my, get out of my church. You're full of sin, you're going to hell. That's hatred, that's anger. That would have brought them closer to the devil. You would have saved no souls. But she loved them, but she never compromised. So there's a difference. So again, the, these Christian pastor friends of mine that flew out to the Boston Satanic Conference Preach the love of Jesus showed not only preach the love, but also displayed the love. The Bible says, don't just be a sayer of the word right? Don't just say the word, be a doer of the word. So when I'm talking about not compromising and conquering evil with good, because look, if you yell at them, they're going to, I, if I was a Satanist and I saw someone yelling at me, I would never want to become a Christian. I would say, uh, uh-uh, that's why I'm serving the devil. Okay. By the way, last thing I'll say about that 90, she said 98% of the Satanist that went to the satanic conference, the largest gathering in satanic history, um, last a month ago, they're 98% of them are atheist. 98% of them don't believe in a devil and they don't believe in God. They believe in freedom. They believe in doing whatever you want to do as thou wilt. I was shocked. I thought they knew they were actively uh, were serving the devil. They don't know. It's the top echelon, the higher and higher, and just like the or just different orders, right? Just like in you know Christianity, there's like different levels, right? There's grace to grace, glory to glory, just like in Satanism. It's evil to evil to evil to evil. So the higher you go up, then you're sacrificing animals, sacrificing babies. They know they're serving the devil. They're having encounters with demons. They're having encounters with the devil, right? They know what they're th- they know who they're serving. But the majority of the Satanists are atheists. They have no idea there's even a battle going on in the spiritual realm. Which is which is interesting because, you know, in, in talking about this as the battle in the spiritual realm, you know, you know, you told me, I think it was before the show started, we, we were kind of chatting it and you said, look, Seth, I've got so many atheists that are coming to me and saying, so who's this God guy you're talking about, right? And, and that's what's interesting is that because, you know, look, you know, say 20 years ago, the the good and evil, it was very convoluted. It wasn't black and white. It was, you know, it wasn't cuties on Netflix. It was very, very subtle. And so what you've had happen yeah. though, is as the one side, you know, as the, the demonic side, the communists, the globalists, as they've pushed and they've pushed us and pushed us into this evil, what's interesting though, is that I think that what's happening is that there's this reaction where people, you know, say they're in the middle and they'd say, look, I, I'm not really good or 
I'm not really a Christian or atheist, right? They're like, I don't really know. Who knows, right? But as they see this push from evil, push from evil, they don't just stay in the middle. It's like either they go with the evil and become really evil people, or they go the opposite and become good people. And that that's what, and this is what, you know, I have some, some videos to kind of, you know, review with you about what's happening with the children, which we'll get to. But that's an interesting part about this is that as our society it has become more evil in its appearance, right? Now keep in mind, it's like, what is our society? It's, well, it's what we perceive it to be through the news media, through the internet, which I think paints a very, very different picture than, than the reality. It's like, go wander around middle America, right? You're going to see it's actually mostly normal people that just want to, you know, have a family and love their kids. And there's that small pocket of the really evil people. But then the media highlights that. So you think that, gosh, all of America has become some, you know, insane, you know, pride month trans stuff with you know, grooming kids. It's actually, that's a small part of it, right? It's a small part of it. Oh, go ahead. I, I want to hear what you have to say about that. Uh, well, you know, when I was undercover with Project Veritas, I, one of the investigations we were doing, we were investigating the NFL and how a lot of things are covered up, what's going on. And I was talking to a few NFL players, I'm not going to mention their names, um, very well-known players. And they, we, we happen to talk about politics. We, we were talking about something else, but just started talking about stuff. And, and, and they said it themselves, I, I couldn't break my cover, but I was shocked by what they said. They said, listen, you know, um, most of us African-Americans, we are Christian. We, we were born in church. We were raised in church. We're not for the whole LGBT transgender thing. He said, but, and I said, oh, okay, well then, you know, why do you vote Democrat? And he goes, well, because my whole family has been voting for decades. We've been voting Democrat for decades. So that's just something we do. I obviously couldn't argue back with him because I'm a Democrat. <laughs> so in that meeting, you know, I was undercover, so I couldn't really say anything, but it was shocking to me. And I realized he's right. A lot of the country, even the African-American community are born in the church or raised in the church. They know it's wrong. It's just something that they're used to. And that, that paradigm has to break. That paradigm has to shift. Um, and, and to go back to what you were saying about, you know, the, the, the evil, the devil has slowly dripped the evil in our nation, slowly and slowly, slowly. For example, the movies, the music, right? I mean, obviously now it's in our face, but people are so numb to evil because it's all over the movies. It's all over the shows. It, it's, it, they're, they're so used to it. So what happens when there's a crime in front of them, when someone is running around with a knife or someone is raping something, there's a video. The woman was getting raped on the train. No one stepped in just to help her. You see people that are beating each other up and people are just walking by, not doing anything. Why? Because people are numb to the evil because it's all over the movies. You have all this violence in the movies. People love gore movies. People love horror movies. There's a new video that I just covered on my YouTube channel. There, there's a new uh, video game. It's, I forgot the name of it, but it's, it's, it's about sacrificing your friends. You're sacrificing blood sacrifice on an altar to win the game. I mean, it's a demonic show. When these kids, unbeknown to the kids, okay, I, whether their parents are aware of it or not, or the kids are aware of it or not, they're buying this video game, they're putting into the DVD, whatever it's called, the Xbox, they're playing the game, they're sacrificing their friends, unbeknownst to them, they're actually making covenants with demons right in their living room, right in their bedroom. And it's like playing a Ouija board. Whether you're aware of the spiritual realm or not, I have many friends who played with Ouija boards as kids. One of them, <laughs> actually both of them had the same experience, uh, was 16, played with a Ouija board with their friends, the lights turned off, the, the, before the lights turned off, the, the thing moved on its own. 666, it spelled out 666, and then spelled out Satan three times. And then the lights turned off. And the only way that they can turn the lights back on, they kept flicking with the switch, didn't, didn't come on. She knew as a kid, because she went to church, her grandparents were pastors. She said, in Jesus' name, lights come on. Boom, the lights came back on. From then on, she freaked out. She left to go home. You know what she left home with? All these demons. They jumped on her, literally. I mean, you think this, you think this is a joke? I'm telling you, this stuff is real. She came home. She couldn't sleep. She had nightmares. She heard suicidal voices to kill herself. This stuff is real, you guys. She had to go to her grandma and say, grandma, what do I do? The grandma said, you have to, you have to repent. You made a covenant with the devil. You have an open door. You need to repent, ask Jesus to forgive you and, and to cleanse you and rededicate your life to God. And so I had my pastor, same thing. She played with a Ouija board. She was a Catholic in, in Philippines. She played with Ouija boards, came home with demons too, saw the 666 Satan written out with no one was moving the thing. So you're bringing a kid is bringing home a video game. Parents buys it for the kid or the kid buys it, or an adult buys it themselves. You're making a covenant with the devil in the spiritual realm. It's an open door. It's not a joke. It's not anything to play with. If you've been there, maybe this is you, maybe, maybe someone watching right now 
you played with the Ouija board. God can forgive you. Okay. He can help you. Some of them have been living with these demons for 20 years, unbeknownst to them. Well, you just say, Lord, forgive me. I break every covenant, Lord. Forgive me of all my sin, anything that I did willingly or subconsciously, Lord. I don't want to be a sinner. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Boom. God is so good to forgive us. He's such a merciful God. And that is the love and compassion that we have to extend to the left. And we'll talk, I know we're going to talk about the pride stuff. That is how you overcome evil with good. You don't compromise, but you extend the olive branch, right? You extend that hand of mercy that I was given. I'm extending it now through me to someone else because God forgave me of a lot of things that I've done that I regret. You know, and, and I think that we're in this this time period where this this good and evil that we're seeing play out, especially the the rise of evil in our society, and, and we'll talk about you know some of the pride stuff in a second here. But I almost feel like that that part of it is because it's it's God like testing us. Like, how do you act in the face of this? Right? If you're a parent and your kid comes home with you know with material, you know, pornographic materials, what do you do as a parent? Do you do you take your kid out and homeschool them? Do you join the school board? Do you go, uh, you know, deliver a speech that goes viral on the internet because you're standing up against it? Or do you just accept it and say, well, it, it's not that bad, right? It's not that bad. We'll just kind of let it slide. But what's encouraging, and, and I'll, I'll pull, actually I'll pull this article because this is it just <laughs> brings the biggest smile on my face, but this just came out because, so middle school students tear down pride banners and chant, USA are my pronouns while wearing red, white, and blue. And the reason why this made me so happy is because, you know, look, I you know, went, to, went to school in the early 2000s, right? So I'm of the age that, you know, when I was in, in liberal arts school at that time, I had teachers that were showing like nasty, like homosexual movies in my liberal arts writing courses. And at that time, I thought this is kind of weird. And I just kind of looked away. I didn't want to watch it, but I now realize that that was them pushing this. And so when I've looked at the kids now and I see the kind of stuff the kids are dealing with, I've had these thoughts before of like, like I don't have a whole lot of hope, right? If, if the kids are like this and like, what, where's the hope for the future if, if they're being indoctrinated, but we're seeing that these kids are fighting back right now, granted, maybe they're, they're getting a little bit angry and they're, they're kind of fighting spirit, but the fact that they're actually standing up and they're saying, no, this is wrong is incredible. And I'll, I'll play a short video. Actually, I found this because you shared it on your Twitter page, which you, know, you folks should be following you. Um, but this is a video of, it's so funny because it's about a minute long video, a news station covering this event that they're referring to as like very hateful and, you know, kind of like full of bigotry. But actually, if you look, listen to what's happening, it's like, it makes you so proud of these young kids. So I'll, I'll play this for everyone. It's of intolerance and homophobia are unacceptable. This type of intolerant rhetoric starts in the home. Parents angry at town hall over intolerance at Marshall Simons Middle School. Kids were asked to wear rainbow clothes in honor of Pride Spirit Day, but some organized a counter protest wearing red, white and blue or black. The principal sharing a statement to families that Pride posters were ripped down, stickers ripped up, some students chanted USA are my pronouns and students showing Pride were intimidated. It was an unruly disruption in fact, that was organized ahead of time. While some parents were upset, others say it was overblown. Some of the kids threw the stickers on the ground. But, you know, I can only speak for my daughter. She just, she didn't want to wear that to school. It's not that she wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. She says her daughter felt coerced to participate in the Pride event and was offended by some of the messages, like this quote from Tennessee Williams. Human heart cannot be straight. It is curves and winds. And my daughter just kind of said, you know, Mom, that's, that's offensive to, to me, who I am straight. You know, when I see that, and when I also hear you telling me that more and more people are coming to you and they're saying, look, like, tell me more about this religion thing or tell me more about God, that what this shows me is that as the, they push this evil, it's creating this, this reaction, this opposite reaction is happening where the, a lot of people are actually saying, I no longer want to be kind of wandering aimlessly. I'm seeing how evil the world is. And whether it's a kid fighting back against the indoctrination in their schools or it's a teenager or an older person, like they're actually turning back. And I think that we're seeing this massive revival of people. Yes, I can I can speak to you know those people here in America 
that want to get back to the traditional way of living, that want to get back to the strong nuclear family and you know the, the, the community centered around faith. And so is this something that you're seeing too? Well, I want to comment on that and say, of course, I'd love to see it. I was so happy to see it. That's why I shared it. Um, you know, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion, but the wicked flee when no one pursues them. So I'd love to see the boldness. I would challenge the parents to even teach their kids and have the kids go to a higher level. Meaning, I love the bold. bold. No, I'm not going to wear this. I'm going to I'm going to speak out against this against this. But I would I would I would challenge them to go to the extra mile. You know, Jesus talked about going the extra mile. For example, instead of throwing the stickers on the floor and stomping on them and saying, ah, you know, instead be like, you know what, teacher, I, I respect everyone's opinion, but I love Jesus. And Jesus told me in the Bible that this is sin and I'm praying for them and I'm praying for you to receive the love of God. Right. Going to the next level of peace, love, humility. Because you're not going to win over those souls by being angry, by stomping on their stickers, by ripping off the pride flag. Trust me, me, Anna, I would love to do that. Rip down, stomp on the stickers, say, you guys are crazy. You're going to hell. But again, you're you're overcoming evil with evil. I'm not saying don't pull down the pride flags, but, you know, take them down and say, listen, teacher, I don't, I don't think this is appropriate. And, And with all due respect, I love my God and I want to honor my God. That's why I'm wearing not just a USA flag. I have a cross on me as well. I love Jesus. I love this country. Please, I don't feel comfortable in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you. You know, so coming at them with compassion, going to the next level. Instead of snapping on the stickers, go to them with the, with, with the love and the peace of God. Because you know what's going to happen? When you come to them with that love and that peace, they're going to want what you have. First of all, they're going to be uh, convicted that a little 10-year-old comes over and says, you know, with all due respect, teacher, I, I respect you and your opinion, but I, this is not what the Lord showed me to do. I, I, I don't feel, I, I just, I can't do this. I'm sorry. God bless you, but I'm going to wear my, my Jesus flag. I'm going to wear, you know, uh, USA flag, you know, going the extra mile, because let me tell you, that's going to convict them even more. That's really going to realize why, wait a second, this, this child is so full of love, so full of peace, so full of gentleness and humility. Maybe their God is real. Because how are they? I'm so angry and they're so full of peace. So that's going the extra mile that I would would challenge the parents to teach their kids. Again, kids don't know this. This is why parents have to teach their kids. That's why it's in the Bible. That's why it's important to read the Bible every single day. Parents and the kids together. Because it's going to open up a a chamber of their heart they never thought was possible. Where you can actually not compromise with the devil, but in such a love, honorable, humble way. And what's interesting is that, you know, going back to the idea of that, you know, these emotions are what allow these, these demons to kind of come in and manipulate things like that's, that's how they work. And so if let's just say that there's an Antifa person and he's screaming and he's, he's a communist and he's, you know, say that he's screaming at um, a group of patriots, say there's a Trump rally, right? Like what the demons want most is for that reaction on the other side of the aisle, that person with the, with the American flag and the MAGA hat, they want that person to also react in rage because then they can go control that person too. And before you know That's it, now exactly. you got both sides fighting and it just heats up and, and, and then there's a fist fight that breaks out and it's like, it, it goes downward from there. But it's funny because what I've, what I've found in my own experience too, and is that when someone's like that, if you don't, if you're just calm, like if you don't react yeah. to their anger, you'll see their anger very quickly runs out. And what's also interesting is, is my wife, actually, she has this saying where she'll say, like in, in that kind of situation, she'll say, what possesses you to act like this? Right. It's an interesting question. Like if someone's like foaming at the mouth and, you know, really kindly you say, what possesses you to be so angry with me? It, it's oh. like, it, it's like, it causes people because people don't want to be possessed. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, it, it, it's, it's like a pattern break. Right. And they just kind of shut down and then you'll find like, and I think that that, that in a lot of ways, it is the solution. And I think that, you know, the example that you gave with your church and the, the couple there is, is, is the example of like having compassion without compromising your values. Like your pastor is not going up and hanging up a, a, a giant pride flag outside the church you know, because that's become the excuse nowadays. Well, love is love and we must love everybody. So I'm going to love whatever you want to do. And even if if you're, you know, if you're you're diddling kids, eh, it's okay. We love you just as much. It's like, no, there's principles, but I'm going to show you compassion. 
That's right. And, th- and that's compromise, right? You're, you're lukewarm Christian. Whereas you can be like you're saying, not compromising, but also showing the love of Jesus. So when you were talking about, um, with the, with the, uh, with the child, dang, I forgot what I was, uh, was going to comment on. Oh, your, your wife, which you say, yes. So with the peace and the love of God, right? When you have someone who's so full of anger, if you respond back to them and quarrel with them, the Bible says that God's children do not quarrel. They don't argue. They don't fight lest you become a fool like them. Right? So when someone's yelling at you and calling you all types of names, yo, you're a Nazi, you're this. If you yell back at them, the demon in them literally gets bigger. They get more angry and they get bigger. So you, again, you don't fight evil with evil. So my pastor and I, for example, we, we go to many rallies left and right. We Antifa, you know, proud boys, you know, right on the other side, we stop many fights many fights where they both want to kill each other. Both are angry. Both are in the flesh. Both are passionately wrong. Both sides. Even if you have righteous principles you're fighting for, if you're doing it in the flesh, if you're doing it in anger and in bitterness and unforgiveness, you're you're in sin just like they are. So for example, my pastor, she's adopted many kids, many spiritual kids, uh, young, old. She's adopted a murderer in her home discipling him with her her and her husband were discipling this ex murderer and who repented found jesus but he still has that spirit of anger he's even though he accepted the lord he has to go through deliverance so deliverance are these different demons that are on you in you your mindset too has to change it's 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 a it's a process you get saved amen but it's a process the bible says you know to work out your salvation so it's it's a deliverance process so this this guy was spirit of murder one day he got really angry at her And she saw this demon of anger fill fill in his eyes. His eyes were bloodshot, right? He said, I'm going to kill you right now. He went to go grab his gun. And instead of her screaming at him saying, oh, you're full of the devil and you're going to hell. uh Uh-uh, that would have, she would have been dead. He would have shot her. It would have been RIP, right? Instead, she looked him in the eyes and she said, son, I love you. I would die for you. I love you. And that broke him. She saw the spirit of murder leave. She even heard it in the spirit because she, she sees in the spirit. So she heard it go Hoof, and she saw it leave and he cried and he apologized and he for, you know, asked for forgiveness. And so when you combat the devil with love, so for example, that one's yelling at you and you like your wife is saying, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say what possessed you. Or if you can say also, you know, God loves you and I love you. I'm praying for you. You know, that love, that peace that, that's, that's in your eyes that you're giving to them, that demon shrinks, that love. Demons hate it. They flee. But if you're full of anger, that demon's going to get bigger. Same thing with kids, same thing with parents. So when you're like, when I, when I see, and I'm in Jesus name, one day I'll be a parent and I have a lot of compassion for them, but you know, it's, it's not easy, right? Kids will, will, kids are amazing, but kids will also uh, test your patience, right? Kids will, will test your humility and your love. And so I see how my pastor disciples children and it's, it's, it's awe-inspiring, um, praise the Lord. I mean, she's always reading the word. She's always fasting. She's always, you know, living the Jesus lifestyle. And I see how she disciples kids, you know, kids, when they get angry, oh, I don't, she doesn't compromise with them. She disciplines them, but she loves them. She goes, okay, sweetheart. Well, come on, let, let's ask God for forgiveness. Let's ask me for forgiveness, please. I love you. And she'll see that spirit of anger, leave that child because parents, it's easy to say, okay, you're, you're a bad kid. Go away. That demon in that little child gets bigger. So it's a spiritual battle. And I'm telling you, we cannot fight the devil in the natural. It has to be done in the spiritual realm. And the only way you can do it is if you have the Holy Spirit and it's only through the name of Jesus. Those demons cannot stay. They hate love. They hate compassion. They hate it. So like you were saying, the devil wins when both sides are full of anger. Both sides are unfortunately part of the devil's camp, whether you're right or left, it doesn't matter. If you're full of anger, you're on the devil's side. Yeah. And, and what an important thing to try to keep in mind. And look, it's, it's not easy. Like I get, I get upset yeah. even with my little, my little, my daughter, who's two and a half. I mean, sometimes I feel like she knows the, the exact button to press. Right. And so I, I have to really keep myself, you know, in check and, and not react wrong. So I don't, I don't want to be that kind of dad, but I also, I, I have to discipline her. Right. So I have to show her some stern discipline. So she knows that there are consequences. And so, yeah, it's not, not an easy balance. So Anna, where's the best place for folks to follow you and what you're doing? The best place to follow me is definitely on Twitter. I love Twitter. That's my favorite. Um, I barely use Instagram, but um, YouTube also, I love to put out content and, and, and 
article uh, stories and things that are happening in the news. Some things that some people don't don't cover or it's hard to find. And so Twitter and um, and YouTube. But you can also email me as well. And you can email me. My ministry email is gatheringbride at gmail.com. If you have a question or you need a prayer, feel free to email me at gatheringbride at gmail.com. Oh, great. And I'll have you send me your, uh, I, I have your Twitter link, but I'll, I'll make sure that I put your Twitter and their YouTube in the description of the video and the, uh, the uh, podcast so people can find you on there. So um, yeah, well, and I thank you again for just being a voice of, of reason and a voice of just goodness in the world. It's really important what you're doing. And uh, you're, you know, if people haven't checked out some of your work, please go check out your YouTube or go to Rumble and just search your name on Rumble. You'll find your speeches at Reawaken uh, Tour which are also really good. So yeah, thank you again for coming on. It's it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Seth, and all glory to Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Bless you guys in Jesus' name. Thank you.